and welcome to Backstage, where we talk about the latest in the worlds of film and TV. I'm Claire Gregory, and joining me this week is Sky's arts and entertainment reporter, Bethany Manel. Hi, yeah. And TV and film critic, Stevie Wong. Hello. Starting then this week, it's all about the Golden Globes. Award season is upon us. This is the kind of the first big ceremony that's announced its nominations. And it's kind of extra interesting because the Globes has been off TV for a couple of years. They uh, kind of had to regroup after receiving some criticism about the organisation. And they've come back and perhaps no huge surprise to see uh, kind of Barbie Oppenheimer leading the nominations. But it is kind of exciting that we're in award season, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. And it's almost like everyone's really going at this now because all the actors and all the writers and directors have been kind of penned up in the strikes for months. Now they've been released and it's almost like, you know, starters orders. We've, they've literally got these these months to, to promote ahead of the big award seasons now. But as you said, it's no surprise that we're going to hear a lot more again about Barbie and Oppenheimer. They were the big films of the summer. It's natural they're going to get lots of nominations, but whether that will transfer into awards it still remains to be seen. Stevie, you think mixed feelings about the Globes? Well, I, I think it's been interesting because in the past, um, at least for the awards type of people, they were this, these ninety members were a little bit easier to kind of corral and and and, and convince and stuff. But the fact now is that it, there's three hundred outside of the United States who can vote for this. And I think it's it's a little bit of a, a, a in, in that sense, going to be a little bit of a free for all. In the musical or comedy section, there are no real musicals in it, <laughs> even though we had a very like it's year of heavy, right yeah. musicals in, in Wonka and Color Purple and, and, and even Little Mermaid. And none of them made the cut for, for musical uh, at all. So it's just a very interesting, again, Golden Globes are doing interesting things uh, now that they're back and they tend to I mean they do do their own thing but they do also give us an indication of what we might be talking about when it comes to BAFTAs when it comes to Oscars and uh, you do see the same kind of films coming up again and again in various categories uh, one of which is the holdovers that's actually not out sure, here yet but apparently Davine Joy Randolph is a big shoe-in for supporting actress people think she might not just get nominated but actually win uh, for, for her part in the holdovers so here's what she had to say when we caught up with her about this I do try very hard to ignore all of it. It's scary, but it's scary because you care, you know? And this is not an easy job to do. Um, it's a very um, privileged job. I, 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 I don't take that lightly at all. But it's it has a lot of challenges. And the biggest thing is because I used to come from theater. Theater, you get to tell one story over and over and over and over and over again. And you get all these opportunities to try and get this moment right or improve it. Where a movie, it's just you guys trying the best you can and hoping that it will resonate. Just resonate, just that people will get it. Um, and so to see that people are uh, beyond getting it is really moving. The winners of the Golden Globes will be announced on the 7th of January. Now, let's look at what could be the next big film franchise. It's Rebel Moon with part one coming to Netflix. So this might sound slightly familiar. It's uh, a colony on the edge of a galaxy. Uh, there's some threats and then a mysterious young woman goes to look for some help. And if you're thinking, hold on a minute, does this sound a little bit like Star Wars? That's because it was originally supposed to be. It was, um, this has been created and directed by Zack Snyder. Um, and when we caught up with him, he said, we talked about if whether, was that rejection for it not actually becoming a Star Wars movie? Was that a blessing in disguise? My wife especially, who's my producing partner, was very much like, oh my gosh, you are seriously going to try that? She goes, you, you've had so much trouble with, you've had enough trouble with DC, and they, they're pretty easygoing with the canon. You think that uh, Star Wars is going to be, they let you do what you want? And also at the time, I was like, maybe we should make it R-rated. They were really like, are you insane? <laughs> you know, like, I don't think that's a thing. You know? and so anyway, so yes, I think it, in hindsight, it probably worked out better. And they've done the old, um, that old trick of kind of creating their own language uh, for, for the movie. Uh, the old know, Tolkien trick. <laughs> the old Tolkien trick, indeed. Uh, and Sturzner, who plays Tarek in the film, told us all about kind of his involvement in, in kind of coming up with that language. 
There was pressure, but I will also say there was a level of freedom because Zach allowed me to create the language along with the language specialist. And I mixed uh, my native tongue, which is Russian, well, one of my native tongues, and my wife's, which is Portuguese. So what a wonderful thing, and what, what, a, what a privilege that working with a director who loves the individual, the actor, embedding more and more of himself into the role and giving me the luxury, because that's the only way you can call it, to build a language that is rooted in my, not just my past, but my present with my, with my wife's language too. It's just an honour. So Rebel Moon Part 1 is coming to Netflix. Over to Prime Video now, where we can see the second series of Reacher. So for those that don't know Jack Reacher, he is a veteran military police investigator and he is absolutely massive, <laughs> as, as in, in stature, he's huge. Based on the Jack Reacher books, uh, which lots of people will know, written by Lee Child, this stars Alan Richardson as Reacher. And I mean, he's, he's great as this guy, isn't he? He literally fills the screen, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he is brilliant in this. I mean, it, the, the character, Jack Reacher, he's a man with, with one possession and one expression, and it works. You know, he, he deals out a lot of retribution. It's all about right and wrong. And I think in a, in a day and age where there seems to be a lot of things wrong and, and we're all feeling maybe a bit lost, it's just quite um, like refreshing and, and quite like a big hug seeing somebody come on screen find a problem and sort it out. He's kind of like, he's the teacher in the room. He's, he's the dad that you look up to. It really worked for me. And this is not my kind of show. It was like having a big hamburger and fries and ketchup. And, and I enjoyed it. Absolutely. I mean, there is there is such a thing called dad core television and Reacher is like the epitome, the gold standard <laughs> of like what this kind of like kind of genre is at this point. Here is a man. He is a few words. He has one toothbrush that he travels with and, you know, and then he will fight crime. When people do bad things, he will punch them. He will use his head to, like, break their legs. He will have guns, a knife, and all that kind of stuff, and then take down a room full of baddies, you know. And in this case, this is a really smart thing. Rather than it's just one man versus well, hundreds, um, he now has a group of people who are, it turns out, if there's a backstory, that, they're, that these were his, his team that he worked with back in the military, and they all come to help him out. And so... It kind of expands the universe a little bit, and it does help to have other characters in the show because then, you know, all uh, even though he does a, a lot of the heavy lifting, it's nice to see other people kind of existing in that universe too. And I think this season is much better than the first one. Mm. Randomly, it's based on the 11th book. So the first season was based on the first, and now they've jumped forward to the 11th. But like you said, it's loads of great characters, so it makes sense. Series two of Jack Reacher is available on Prime Video. And that is it from us. Thank you so much to Bethany and to Stevie for joining me. And if you've liked what you've heard today, you can download the full Backstage podcasts. You can do that by scanning the QR code, which is on your screen, or just search for Backstage wherever you usually get your podcasts. Let's go.